Bio 330 Chapter 2 Part 2 In this second video, we will focus our discussion on population growth. What is population growth? Population growth refers to change in the size of population or the increase in the number of individuals in a population over over time and why population growth very important why ecologists study population growth the first one the finding from that particular study will be used to predict future changes in population size and growth rate second to understand what causes changes in population size and growth rate. Third, to determine how population will respond to the changing in environmental factor such as climate change. Fourth, to investigate the impact of environmental factors on population size and growth rates. How population growth is limited by the environment. We can answer this question based on population growth model. There are two models of population growth. The first one, what we call as a exponential growth model. And the second one, classified as a logistic growth model. First, exponential growth model describes an idealized population in an unlimited environment which is never the case in the real world. There are no way we have unlimited environment. Second model, logistic growth model. This model incorporates the concept of carrying capacity which is the maximum stable population size that a particular environment can support over a relatively long period of, of time. The red line demonstrates exponential growth model where the population keep increase they are the number of or the members of population because they are no unlimited because they due to unlimited environment which is never the case in the real world. It can occur in a laboratory condition only. The blue one, it refers to logistic growth model where it incorporates the concept of carrying capacity. They reach a certain level before they reach what we call as a plateau. We go detail on exponential growth model. Exponential growth model describes an idealized population in an unlimited environment, which is never the case in the real world. But we can simulate this condition in, in laboratory. This model assumes that a population growth without limit for example, in this diagram, the population growth and keep growing without limit, resulting in J-shaped curve. If you look at the curve here, it looks like J. This we call as a J-shaped curve. And this kind of growth rate known as biotic potential, unlimited environment. And biotic potential is the rate at which a population of a given species will increase when no limits are placed on its rate of growth. It keeps growing. The maximum population growth rate under unlimited environment is known as intrinsic rate of increase and the J-shaped curve is a characteristic of population that are introduced into a new or unfilled environment, first, second, 
whose numbers have been drastically reduced before by a catastrophic event and now are rebounding again. So again, I'm explaining the exponential growth model occurs when a population are not limited by resources. Their growth can be very rapid. From the beginning, very rapid, more birth occurs with each step in time, so it will creating a J-shaped growth curve. In contrast, logistic growth model incorporate the concept of carrying capacity. What is carrying capacity? It symbolized as K. We can define carrying capacity, the maximum stable population size that a particular environment can support over a rel relatively long period of, of time. But as any population growth larger in size, increase the members of the population, it will increase density that may influence the ability of individual to harvest sufficient resources for maintenance, growth and reproduction. That's common. When the individual increase in terms of numbers, they may compete for resources. They compete for their food. They compete for the habitat. They compete for other natural resources. So they may limit the sufficient resources that they can harvest. What happens when population size below carrying capacity? If the number of population below the K value or carrying capacity, the population growth very rapid. But when they approach the carrying capacity or K values, population growth rate slows. Eventually, it reaches the plateau and resulting in S-shaped curve. If you look in this figure of the logistic growth model, small population initially experience exponential growth. Exponential means they grow very rapid. But when the population becomes larger, resources become scarce and the growth rate starts to slow. When the population size reach the carrying capacity, the K value here, the growth stops. As a result, the pattern of population growth follow an S-shaped curve. What a correlation or relationship in between population growth models and life histories. Logistic growth model predict that different growth rate for population under condition of high and low densities. For example, at high population densities, each individual has few resources available. So, the consequence is the population is growing slowly. In contrast, at low population densities, each individual has abundance, a lot of natural resources, a lot of food, a lot of space, so that the population able to grow rapidly. Martin Cordes a population ecologist in 1960s introduced the concept that different life history adaptation would be favored under this different density. What happened at high population densities, selection, natural selection, favors adaptation that enable organism to survive and reprodu reproduce with less resources. And this species we classify as a K selected. Meanwhile, at low population densities, selection favors adaptation that promote rabbit reproduction, such as increased fecundity and earlier maturity. And that we can observe in species that we classify as a R selected species. What are the characteristics of the K-selected and R-selected species or population? K-selected species, also known as equilibrium population, are those that are likely to be living 
at a density near to the limit imposed by their resources, which is K or carrying capacity. W1 demonstrate K selected species. They prefer or likely to be living at a density near the limit or near to the carrying capacity. In contrast, art selected, represented by the red line, also known as an opportunistic population, are likely to be found in variable environment in which population densities fluctuate. Okay, if you look at the graph here, it keeps fluctuating, going up, going down. Up and down again. They keep fluctuating. That's the characteristic for the art selective, art selected species. What the example of the K selected and art selected species? Example of the K selected species which include human, other mammals, large trees. Meanwhile, art selected species, for example, insect, fishes, rabbit, bacterial. That of your example of the are selected species and this table demonstrate a differences in between K and R selected species or population. In terms of lifespan, K selected species live longer and shorter in R selected species. Second criteria, time to reproduce or reach maturity long or late in K selected species. But in art selected species, it's short or early. Number of reproductive events, very few in K selected species, but plenty in art selected species. Number of offspring, just a few in K selected species, but many in art selected species. For example, in human, the number of offspring may be single or twin or very rare, triple. But in insect, they produce a thousand of of offspring. How about the size of offspring? Larger in K selected, but smaller in R selected. K selected also provide parental care, but not in R selected species. Population growth rate very slow in K selected, but very fast in R selected species. Density dependent factors regulate population growth in. K selected species in contrast, R selected species is regulated by density independent factors. How about population dynamic? Stable, very stable in K selected species and normally near or prefer near to carrying capacity, but highly variable in R selected species. With that, end of chapter 2, part 2. In the next video, we will continue our discussion on the factors that regulate population growth. Thank you.